Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Anish Gupta. I'm Jack Smith. I'm Shrikar Jendran. So we're back again with the record predictions. This time we're doing the NFC North. And again, we do it via playoffpredictors.com. So please do it. Make your own bracket. Compare it to ours. Each of us got our own record predictions, some more different than others, but I'm sure you guys will have a little bit similar to ours, so be sure to do that. Again, thank you for 200 subs. Road to 300 is on the way with the season approaching. Be sure to stay tuned for giveaways and more shout-outs, et cetera. So please keep watching us, and we will deliver as great of content as possible. So let's just get right into it. Um, we're going to start with the Chicago Bears. And um, obviously, Jack and I, we uh, did an episode with Chris a couple months ago now. It's time flies, man. But uh, we talked about him a lot. And just looking at it for me, I'll start off. I got him going nine and seven. This is kind of my sleeper team in the NFC. And I really think this team can do well. And I've heard a lot of things about Trubisky and Foles. And I know a lot of Bears fans are concerned with that. And my thing is this. I think you should start Mitch Trubisky because – and I'm glad they are because you first off you spend a second a second overall pick on him and you've got you've got to at least see him one more year. I know they didn't pick up his fifth year, so this really is his prove it year. And I think it's hard to do worse than what he did last year, right? I mean, he just couldn't get the ball down the field. And I think 2018 when he made the Pro Bowl, he had a really solid year: 24 touchdowns, 12 picks, and that game against the Eagles, he almost won it. Uh, that throw to Allen Robinson was a really good throw, and I think he would have won it had had it not been for Cody Parkey. I'm sorry to mention that, but yeah, I've got the bears going nine and seven. I think they go five and three at home. Obviously I think they struggle a little bit with winning teams going two and four, but I mean, they've got 10 losing uh, 10 teams that they play, which were under 500 last year. So I think they go seven and three against them. I think they pull off some upsets. uh, Like, I mean, I wouldn't say the Texans game is an upset, but I think they beat them. Uh, And I think they put up a fight versus the saints, but I got the saints ultimately winning that, but yeah, nine and seven. And I think that uh, makes the playoffs for me. So before I get into my prediction, I have a question for you. Do you think Nick Foles comes in at some point during the first half of the season? You're, you know, during the season at all at that? Without a doubt. So, I w- so it all depends because for me, at least, I actually have him starting out pretty well. I'm going three and one uh, okay. in the first four games. I'm beating Detroit. I'm beating New York. Uh, I have him losing to the Falcons, but I do have him beating the Colts. So that's a three and one start. I mean, and here's the thing. If Trubisky isn't producing as much, but they're still winning, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah, okay, if they struggle, they lose maybe two or three in a row, throw Foles in. I think he's that's what he's there for. And also gives them a little bit more time to get integrated with the system. And I know he's been doing good in camp. I think I've eaten my words a little bit on it. I thought it would take him a little bit more time. But again, go with Mitch Trubisky, see what he does, right? There are a lot more offensive weapons. They're all developing now more. I think Allen Robinson's got another year under his belt with uh, Matt Nagy. Same thing with David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen. So let's just see how this thing rolls. And if it doesn't work, fine, throw in fulls. But yeah, that, it could happen. So I have him going eight and eight. I have him one less than Anisha's prediction. I think the Bears are one of the hardest teams to really predict this year. Um, I still think that defense is elite. Um, in terms of quarterback play, <laughs> Just who knows, but I think the Bears, they, they they picked him for a reason to start over full. So, and I think we're going to see at least some sort of progress, whatever it may be, uh, from Trubisky. So I got him eight and eight, uh, three and three within the division. And um, mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's not enough. That's not enough to make the playoffs. Uh, but I think it's going to leave a lot of question marks for how they want to go forward. Um, because you know, Trubisky and or Foles leading them to an eight and eight record. It's, it's kind of a tough situation to be in, but eight and eight, that's my prediction. They go exactly 500. Yeah. I think that that reason that you mentioned for starting Trubisky over Foles may have been the fact that they start off the season with, with some, with some easy games. I think that there, there are, there are more easy games on the schedule. to get to play some losing teams from last year that they, I think they want to see Trubisky. They want to see Trubisky play well, and these teams give him a chance. So if he can't, if he can't produce against these teams, if he can't win against these teams, they know it's Foles' job. And I think that, I think that might be the reason that they went with Trubisky over Foles. But I heard it was pretty close in camp. Obviously, I think a lot of people were really expecting Foles to win, and it was a big surprise when they named Trubisky. Oh the yeah, starter, he played but, really well in camp. But I think they're giving him a chance against these teams at the beginning of the at the beginning of the year. Who you know they're easily beatable teams. I think that the Bears can beat them. And if Trubisky can't, if he can't produce, then maybe it's Foles' job for the rest of the year. But like Shrieker, I've got him going eight and eight. I think that he, he kind of touched on it well. I think that this defense is still elite. Uh, this defense has brought this team to the playoffs before. Uh, so it's just a matter of can Trubisky play close to that 2018 level, or if Foles is there, can he play to that to that level where he just needs to play at so that this defense can bring them to the playoffs. And 
for me, it doesn't happen. They miss out just as the eight seed at eight and eight. Uh, but I think eight and eight is an okay I mean, season. Quick thing though, but like Trubisky, like 24 and 12 is not as hard to hit. And I'm just like, I think it is possible. We'll see, obviously, but he doesn't have to like, I'm, maybe he could be better. We never know. But also that defense, I think got better from 2018. In That's my true. opinion. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, Robert Quinn was a very underrated addition. I mean, Akeem Hicks is finally healthy. We're going to talk about Kyle Fuller, Eddie Jackson. So just watch out for that team. Obviously I think I just have, I have a little bit more faith in Trubisky than I think you guys do. Uh, and just a little bit more faith in this defense. I think they get that illustrious seven seed that I think four teams are really fighting for. And uh, I think if you guys want to switch it over to the green Bay Packers, uh, you guys want to go over there. So obviously we do know what happened with them 13 and three last year. Uh, really one game away from the Super Bowl. I'll let Shrikar kind of handle it, uh, give his prediction first. All right. Well, as a Niner fan, you know, Packers, I'm sorry, Green Bay. <laughs> but um, I have you guys going 11-5 and five this year. I actually have you guys doing good. Um, I have you going 3-3 three and three in the division. All of the teams in the NFC North for me are going 3-3 three and three in the division, which is something uh, to note there. But 11-5, okay. and five, uh, Matt LaFleur in his second year. Um, I think Aaron Jones – He's going, to, he's going to be a stud in this offense for quite a while, even with the addition of A.J. Dillon. I think that's going to be a nice one-two punch back there. And don't forget, you still have Jamal Williams. Um, Aaron Rodgers, let's see. I, I mean, he's still a top, I'd say top six, top seven quarterback still. Um, and I think he's going to have a good season this year. In terms of the defense, Zadaria Smith, Preston Smith, Jair Alexander, you got playmakers there. Uh, linebacker core with Christian Kirksey. We'll, we'll see how that works out, but you know, Kirksey worked with Petten before, so I think, um, they can make it work there, but 11 and five, that is my prediction. They go really, they do really good at home. I have them going seven and one at home, uh, four and four on the road. Uh, I think they lose to Tampa Bay. Um, you know, you, you'll probably spit a split with Minnesota. My bad. Um, I could see you losing to new Orleans too. So, um, 11 and five, that's my prediction for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I think that me and Anish kind of talked about this a lot here. And we agreed on something, which, you know, it surprises most of you, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but the, the Green Bay Packers were a very weak 13 and three team. Uh, yeah. we, they, their record was impressive, uh, but we were not very much impressed with the team in general. Uh, and I think that that's something that kind of continues on to this year. I still have them winning the division at 10 and six, but I, I don't think they're, they're a huge Super Bowl contender. I don't think they should be a Super Bowl favorite. I mean, most teams coming off a 13 and three season are, you know, projected to go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. But I've never, I have not seen yet a Green Bay Packers prediction to win the Super Bowl this year, which is kind of oh, crazy yeah. for a team coming yeah. off of a 13 and three season. Yep. Um, so I, I, I kind of like the pieces they have, but for some reason, I just feel like, I feel like they won't get it done. And I wasn't super impressed with their play. And while Aaron Rodgers, he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. Last year, I was really not impressed with this season. I think that just, <laughs> You know, he may have the stats sometimes, and obviously he's got the talent, but last year it just seemed like on the field was not really impressed with this play. Uh, so I've got him going 10 and 6. It's still good enough for the three seed in the NFC and a division title, but uh, not 13 and 3. I don't, I just think that this is going to be another maybe disappointing 10 and 6, too. Like maybe they look like an 8 and 8, 9 and 7 team, but they win 10 games. Yeah, I think Jack hit it on the nail. Same thing for me, right? But I think also that what contributed to that 13 and 3 team not being as well was I think it was a top heavy NFC. There were three 13 and three teams, which is very, you don't see that often. And uh, also I've, Seattle felt like a 13 and three team, in my opinion, last year too, even though they didn't do as well in the playoffs. Uh, I think they still felt really, really solid throughout the regular season. So you're right on that. I think everyone has the Packers kind of regressing a little bit just because I think their counterparts in the NFC North caught up to them uh, in terms of the bears and even the Lions. I think got better. So I think the Lions may steal one from the Packers. So I've got them going 11 and five, same as Shrieker. I've got them in the same place as you, Jack third seed. Uh, I mean, the only game I think that could push them to 10 and six is the bears went off the bye, but I think the Packers will win it at home. So I think the Packers go four and two in the division for me. I think they uh, sweep the bears and actually split with the Lions and the Vikings. But, um, again, great. Uh, I think there's still, yes, they didn't address the receivers for Aaron Rodgers, but again, you still have a top four guy in Devonte Adams. I think Alan Lazard can develop and Aaron Rodgers. I got to show respect to him. I think a lot of people have asked me, right? Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson will probably pass him this year, but for me, I got to give respect to what he's done. The two-time MVP. So I think he's got a lot. Of, I mean, he's still got uh, talent in this league and, uh, Jack hit it on the nail with his throwaways. I think he just didn't, he wasn't as aggressive. And that's something mm -hmm. you don't hear when I talk about Aaron Rodgers. He's the type of guy he's, He's a gunslinger. I mean, I kind 
kind of in the way where it's like he will get it down the field, right? Not like Brett Favre type of thing where he's really loose with it, but he will find a way to get it. And last year, I just didn't see that. I saw a lot of throwaways. I saw a lot of conservative play out the pocket, which I don't expect from him. So let's see how he does. Obviously, I think he's 36 now. Hopefully, he can uh, take this team to where all three of us have him, which is back to the playoffs. Uh, but yeah, I got him going 11-5 and as the third seed. And I think if we go to Detroit. our next team, uh, the Detroit Lions, I'll let Jack start us off with that one. Yeah, I think that throughout the offseason, I was not high on Detroit. Uh, and I mentioned that I think that they're one of the teams that's contending for the first overall pick. I've kind of changed my prediction on that a little bit. I don't think they'll contend for the first overall pick, but I think they're they're the definite last place team in this division. I've got them going 5-11. and 11. Um, And, you know, maybe Stafford wins them more games. I just... I think there's a lot of holes on the Detroit roster. Obviously, you know, there's got to, they've got a good one-two punch at running back now, we believe. We haven't seen DeAndre Swift play yet, but then yeah. they've got a good two uh, good two receivers with Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. I like TJ Hawkinson, but the offensive line is a little iffy, uh, and I think that on the defense side of the ball, they don't have a ton of linebacker, uh, and obviously they get Jeff Akuda, but the secondary is still a little bit also iffy. So I think this Detroit – They've, they've got aging places on some of their on their roster and then young places on the other part of the roster. So it's like Detroit's just a weird team for me. I've got going 5-11. and 11. Uh, It could be worse and it could be better. Uh, so Detroit was a hard team to predict, but I don't have them contending for the first overall pick, but I've got them going 5-11. and 11. I got to agree with Jack. I am going 5-11. and 11. Um, I think you said it perfectly. This is another team that's hard to predict in the NFC North. But look, Stafford back, I think that gives you – well, in my prediction, it gives you two more wins. Uh, but I think this team, it, it's just, it's the Lions. So it's mm-hmm. like, I'm, it's hard to really think of them doing good. You know what I mean? So five and 11, <laughs> three and three. And I, I hate to say it, Detroit fans, but I mean, sorry, but. They can't deny five, it. Yeah, yeah, you cannot. No. Uh, they go four and four at home, one and seven on the road. Um I think I think my home and away predictions have just been really wild <laughs> when it comes to these uh, playoff predictors. But five and eleven—that's my prediction for the Lions. Yeah, five and eleven sweep here. It's just—I mean, one—I'm not as high on Matthew Stafford as others. I, I mean, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of people put him in their top ten. Look, AKA Shrikar. can't put a quarter. I can't, huh? AKA Shrikar. Oh yeah, Shrikar too. Look, I'm not putting a quarterback that has not won a playoff game in eleven years in my top ten. No way. So. I think people need to understand that with, especially in the NFL, I don't care about regular season, especially for quarterbacks. If you're going to be in my top 10, you need to have some playoff experience. And the only exception is my guy, Carson Wentz, just because he's done things that I haven't seen, uh, seen before. And he's still really young, but I mean, if you're 11 years in, you don't have a playoff win on your resume, that's pretty bad. So, I mean, obviously Stafford does give him an edge though. I think they do get two more wins and also their schedule did get harder this year. I mean, they played the NFC South. That's no joke. And I think the bears uh, and the Vikings, are still teams that are really hard to beat. So I got the Bears sweeping them. I got them going two and four in the division. But you never know with this guy. I mean, if Matthew Stafford goes crazy, I mean, they could obviously go like seven and nine, eight and eight or something like that. But again, it's just a really hard team to predict. I think Jack put it on put the nail on the coffin when he said weird team. So I got him going five and 11. Yeah, especially with Stafford's injury. We really don't know what to expect. It's, it's kind of like Cam Newton, but I feel like a little bit worse um because his injury Jeff Okuda la- could win uh defensive rookie year, so I had so. I think he has no shot at winning defensive rookie year. corners yeah, there it's really? always hard for rookie corners to come into the no league. it is it's very hard but he's the type of guy to make an immediate it's, if, it's, if anyone if anyone could I think it's possible him. but I feel like corners they there's there's obviously a period where it's hard for them to adjust to the NFL You're right. You're right. um and he's got to face some good receivers he's got to go against Galladay he's got to go against Allen Robinson he's going to go against Devontae Adams Not just Galladay, his division uh, Thielen Robinson and Adams yeah I don't know why I said go yeah in practice he's gonna go in practice yeah. he is so but that's yeah good. even that's good practice but even Thielen Robinson yeah. and Adams in his division They're let alone the guys opinion, let so. alone he the guys he has to face in the NFC South so it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard year so <laughs> that's like six of the top 15 receivers in the NFL yeah. mm-hmm. that's terrible well, so yeah it's opinion. it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting I feel like I'm still sticking with my belief they should have gone with Isaiah Simmons but Okuda I think will be good for them Maybe not this year. Maybe he won't be a Pro Bowl caliber this year, but maybe next year, maybe the year after. I think they just believe in uh, Jamie Collins, which, again, I mean, outside of New England, he hasn't done anything. I should know because of Browns, and we gave him too much money. So, I mean, you guys good with switching to the Vikings, though? Yeah. All right. Uh, So, I think I'll let Shrikar start us off on the Vikings. Give us your record. Tell us how you think they're doing. So, I have them going 9-7, and and unfortunately, that's the 9 seed, not enough to make the playoffs. 
Um, with the Vikings, nine, seven is the ninth seed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> okay. I, I don't know what my eight seed was. Uh, Atlanta was my eight seed at nine and seven as well. Um, but um, Jeez. but Minnesota nine and seven. I think with how much they lost, they did their best to kind of fill all their holes. But you know, when you look at the defense, that D line is very good. Their linebackers are great. Safeties are great. Their corners, eh, it's like it's Gladney and Mike Hughes. And I, I mean, Hughes has been good in camp. He's been good, but Gladney, we still don't know. But um, in terms of the offense, Kirk Cousins, I think he'll do his thing this year. Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson, uh, I think that's a great duo at wide receiver. And Dalvin Cook is going to be Dalvin Cook. So I have him going nine and seven. Uh, I think. They go, they, I think they lose to Atlanta. I have them losing to Seattle. Um, I have them splitting with Chicago, losing to Tampa Bay, losing to new, losing to new Orleans uh, on the road. And, and then also losing week one to the Packers. So nine and seven, that's my prediction for right now. And I think that week one pick could change because I've been flip-flopping between green Bay and Minnesota, but I'm sticking with green Bay for now, but nine and seven, that's my prediction. Yeah. I think that Minnesota is also, it's an interesting team because I want to give them more wins, but for some reason I just feel like with all the roster turnover, it's it's going to take some adjusting. And so I've got them going eight and eight. Uh, I think that on paper this could be a much better team than it is, but I think cornerback is an, an important position on defense. That they lost basically everyone on. Um, and now Yannick Ngakwe can be good, but he's got to come in and learn the system, and he's got to adjust to being in Minnesota. Um, so there's just a lot of roster turnover, and I don't love it when teams – do that and so I've got them going eight and eight uh I wish I could give them more wins I think they're a better team than that uh, I think they will be in the future too but I feel like the adjustment period might might get them a little bit so they're gonna go in eight and eight three and three in the division and that's also a nine seed for me I feel like Jack has everyone going eight and eight but he wants to give them more wins I do <laughs> but uh, um for the Vikings as I as ironic as I say that I'm sorry Devin if he's watching this but I got him going eight and eight as well um the problem is for me it's just the start, the start of the year, the adjustment period. You're right. Because I have them going one and four to start the year. I mean, I think they lose to the Packers, Colts, Texans, and Seahawks. But then obviously they pick it up and they go like eight and four to, to finish the way or seven to four to finish the way. The problem is, it's just that rocky start. And I don't know if they have enough time to overcome that. That is my only problem here. And I, otherwise this team is really good. But I think, again, is it a drop off from Diggs to Jefferson? I think it is. The corners, I think it is still a drop off. As much as Devin has been telling me about Mike Hughes and Colton Hill, Again, I think it is a drop-off uh, from Alexander Rhodes and Trey Wayne. So I need to see it on the on paper. I think Anthony Harris could develop, though, into a really good safety. But, yeah, it's just that start, man. If they didn't have to play those type of teams, if they flip-flopped it, I think they could have may- maybe gone 10-6. and six. But it's just, I mean, Packers, then Colts, then Texans, then Seahawks. I mean, and I have them beating the Titans, too, in a team that I think it will be really good. So that's a really tough start. Uh, I think people are underrating that for the Vikings, especially with all these rookies coming in. And experienced teams like the Packers, the Colts, right? I mean, even the Texans are, and obviously Seattle. So these are experienced teams that you're facing, right? And with young talent, it's hard to see, hard to expect them to uh, put up with these uh, veteran talents. So I got them going eight and eight, but they definitely could go better. It's just how you do in these first five games. Yeah, I think that's exactly how it is. I think that this division, this division is up in the air. To be completely honest, I've yeah. got I've got Green Bay winning it. But I can see Chicago or Minnesota easily Me taking too. taking the division crown. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people saying Detroit possibly can too, saying that it's a four team race for the division. I don't uh, see Detroit, but I see the other three either. teams. I see the other yeah. three teams competing to win this division. Uh, so by season's end, we could see one of three different division winners. As of right now, I have Green Bay, but you know who knows. I yeah, would not too. I, I think the Bears, Bears, watch out for them. I, th- I really, I think they're my yeah. Sleeper, but. I, I originally had the Bears winning it, but then. I, I think that I think that Trubisky just starting the year as much as I said I want him to be able to break out I'm just not sure if it's going to happen uh so I've got him going eight and eight I think I originally had him I think I originally had him 10 and six in Green Bay like nine and seven uh went back mm-hmm. and did a little tinkering and, and had Green yeah, Bay coming yeah, yeah. out with the division title but uh, I think that there's a chance that Chicago or Minnesota or Green Bay wins this division as of right now I've got Green Bay but this is probably the most up in the air division in the entire oh league. for sure but yeah, kind of to wrap this up, I mean, we, again, a little bit more similar predictions this time. Uh, but yeah, I think we all have the same division winner. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out our socials down below, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Stay tuned for more giveaways, other stuff that we're doing. We've got a lot of stuff planned for the season. I mean, we, we're so excited. I mean, it's finally football back. I'm telling you, it's been so long. 
and we're all so excited for it. I'm sure the NFL community is too. So please be sure to stay tuned for really great content. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.